This is a 3D mesh and this is a 3D point cloud. And in this video, we're going to talk about how you can use both of these 3D models for everything from 3D printing to augmented reality. So stay tuned to learn more. Okay, if you're new to 3D models, there are a few important concepts we need to talk about first. So for all 3D models, there are three main ingredients, a vertex, an edge, and a face. Now, a vertex is essentially just one point in 3D space that has XYZ measurements. An edge, on the other hand, is a line that connects one vertex to another. And a face, also known as a polygon, connects three or more vertices to form a surface. And when you have hundreds or thousands or even millions of these polygon faces, then you essentially get a 3D model, also known as a mesh. Now, a quick important note on polygon faces. Logically, the more faces that you have, the more photorealistic your 3D model will look. And this is known as a high poly or a high polygon count 3D mesh. Now, high poly meshes are great because they're so photorealistic, but the downside is they're also more computationally intensive, so they're a lot slower to render. On the other hand, a low poly 3D model is a lot faster because it has fewer faces, so if speed of 3D rendering is what you're going after, looking at you gamers and animators, then a low poly 3D model is what you'd probably want to go for. Now the difference between a 3D mesh and a 3D point cloud is that meshes have surfaces, whereas point clouds only have vertices, just the points, and the surface area removed. And because of this, meshes will look a lot more photorealistic than 3D point clouds. You might be wondering to yourself, well, why would I ever want to go for a 3D point cloud if 3D meshes look so much better? And the answer is accuracy. Because within a point cloud, you can give very exact measurements between two points, whether you're trying to measure a straight line, an area, or a volume. And this might be particularly helpful if you're an engineer looking to renovate a house, or if you're trying to build a second kitchen, or trying to figure out the height of a mountain. Basically anything that you need exact measurements for, you'll want to go with a 3D point cloud. On the other hand, 3D mesh models can deliver a very compelling visualization, which is great for marketing material and are best friends for movie producers and video game creators. We're even seeing doctors now use 3D mesh models to design orthotics and prosthetics and museums who want to provide their visitors with a more digital experience use 3D models instead of having visitors go in person to an exhibit. And now, with advancements in visual displays and 3D technologies, you can actually create a 3D mesh model directly from your iPhone or iPad. So, for example, if you want to see what that couch from IKEA looks like in your living room, you can go to IKEA, take out your iPad, and scan it with the LiDAR sensor on board, create a 3D mesh model, upload it, save it, and then when you get home, pull it back up in your living room to see how it might look. So how do you create 3D meshes? Two of the most common ways are digital sculpting and CAD modeling. Now you may have heard of the term CAD before, which stands for Computer Aided Design. This is the number one most common way that designers and engineers will use to create 3D digital models. And just about everything you have used in your daily life will have initially come from a 3D CAD design whether that's the engine in your car or the keyboard that you're currently typing on. Now the reason why CAD models are so powerful is because you can package in additional parameters such as weight and size, material, transparency, uh, and even texture that you can then send all of that along with the 3D file to a 3D printer. Digital sculpting, on the other hand, is what movie producers and video game creators will use to create 3D assets, such as uh, clothing or shields or even entire virtual worlds. Now, with this process, a 3D designer or a 3D artist will go into a CAD model and manipulate the geometrical faces on that model by pushing and pulling and twisting different faces until they have the desired result. Uh, conceptually, it's actually very similar to sculpting with real clay. Needless to say, this practice requires a lot more time and a lot more artistic skills. And now, with Sys3D, you can view, analyze, and share 3D point cloud and mesh models directly on the Sys3D platform. We've expanded our supported file types to include five different point cloud formats and seven different mesh formats, with more coming on the way. So now that you know what 3D point clouds and meshes are, 
feel free to take it for a spin on Stitch 3D and start experiencing the 3D digital world for yourself. See y'all next time.